Okay, everybody, quick tutorial here on the derivatives of exponential functions. And I'm going to start out by telling you that the base of the natural exponential function is e. So when we talk about that particular function, we mean like, for example, e to the x. And when we say the base, we mean the thing that's being raised to the power. So specifically, e is the base here. So if a is a positive real number and isn't 1, then uh, the ex exponential function to the base a is denoted by this a to the x routine here. And that's going to help you out. I really, no, no blanks to fill in per se on that one. Okay? So just, you know, a to the x being a general number. So y is equal to 3 to the x. Then that indicates that the base is 3 just so everybody's familiar with that, okay? So that shouldn't be too hard to do. Uh, let's take a look at the next page here. And as I go to do this, we're going to talk about derivatives of bases that are other than e at first. So here's the pattern for how you find the derivative of an exponential function. The derivative of any exponential function a to the x is going to be the same function all over again times the natural log of that base. So it's the same function all over again times the natural log of that base. Should be pretty easy to follow along. Uh, if I have a differentiable function u, uh, differentiable function of x u, then the derivative is going to be a to the u times the natural log of a, and then you multiply it by the derivative of that differentiable function u. So shouldn't be too hard to figure out on how to do those things. Let's go ahead and do a couple of quick examples here, starting with just 2 to the x power. This derivative is going to be super easy to calculate. All you have to do is just find the derivative by repeating the function itself times the natural log of that particular base. In this case, the base is 2. No big deal. Okay? Easy to do. So for the chain rule here, the derivative is going to be 2 to the power of 3x times the natural log of this base of 2, and then I have to multiply it by the derivative of that inner function. So my 3x is sort of my inner function, so for the chain rule, I have to multiply it by 3. Okay, now a little warning on this, since this 2 is paired up with that 3x there, that's, that's one thing you need to know, since the 2 is paired up with that 3x, and this 2 is inside that natural log, you can't combine the 3 with anything else. Okay, So this 3 is a separate factor, and it cannot be combined with the exponential function or the natural log situation there. It, it just is what it is. There's really nothing more that you can do with this other than maybe bring it out in front just to make it look a little cleaner. That's really all you can do. Okay? So that's, that's kind of the scoop with that. All right, so now that we've got that down, it's really not too difficult to uh, find derivatives like that. Again, it's just repeat the function, multiply by the natural log of the base, and then by u prime if there is. Okay. Well, what if we have our base of e? What if our base is indeed e? Well, let's follow the pattern and see what happens here. What you're going to wind up getting is you're going to wind up getting a repeat of the function times the natural log of that base. All right, well, I've got some interesting news to remind you of. The natural log of e is just really equal to 1. So, surprise, surprise, the derivative of e to the x is just simply e to the x power. That's pretty crazy stuff. Okay, let's take a look at what happens if there's a differentiable function of u. Well, same thing, really. You're going to have e to the u. Now, I'm not going to multiply this time by the natural log of the base because we already know the natural log of this base is 1. 
So I can just skip straight to U prime and be done with it. Okay? So let's take a look at a couple of quick examples and try not to fall into any traps along the way here. Uh, starting with uh, a e to the 2x. Well, the derivative of whoops, the derivative of e to the 2x is simply going to be e to the 2x times the derivative of this inner function for the chain rule. So that derivative of the inner function is just 2. And really, the only simplifi simplification you can get is pull the 2 out in front. So you get 2e to the 2x as your derivative. Not too bad. OK, now what happens if you have a situation like over here where you're just taking the derivative of e? Well, remember, e is a constant. So therefore, the derivative of any constant is going to, of course, be 0. That's a little bit of a trick question there. Got to be careful on that. Okay. Uh, well, what about down here in part A in the triad? Well, let's go ahead and march ourselves through. So the derivative of this function is going to be, well, the same thing all over again, e to the x to the third. And then I just multiply by the derivative of that inner function, which is x third which is 3x squared. And really, there's nothing more you can do with it at that point. So hopefully, that's pretty easy to follow along. OK, let's go over here to this last one, part b, on this page. And if I want the derivative of this function, it's going to be e to the x plus x squared and then I have to multiply it by 1 plus 2x for the inner function. And really, that's all you can do. You can't really combine anything else with the e at that stage. So hopefully, this is pretty easy for us so far to figure out. Let's go top of the next page here. And this is a really, really, really good question. And I think this is about as far as I really want to get for today is this example number two, and then we'll We'll worry about um, we'll worry about other stuff later. So let me zoom in a little bit. Uh, at what point does the graph of the function y is equal to two to the t minus three? Does the tangent line have a slope of 21? So if I want to know the answer to that question, then I need to know basically what it's asking is when is dy over dt equal to 21? That's what I would like to know. All right, so let's go ahead and see if we can at least get an exact value for this, and we'll worry about the rest later. Um, so let's, let's go ahead and do dy over dt, and that's going to be equal to 2 to the t times the natural log of 2. And then this is just going to drop out completely, this 3, because it's a constant. So that's pretty much it, because the inner function at this point is t, and the derivative of t with respect to t is just 1. OK, so now that I know this, I've got 2 to the t times the natural log of 2 is equal to 21. And I probably need to figure out what this is. Let's go ahead and divide both sides by the natural log of 2. And then this is where things really start to get a little bit hairy, because now I need to take the natural log of both sides to loose that t out of the exponent. OK, so by the power rule, this t is going to come down and become a coefficient. Okay, so there you see the simplification there. And then I'm just going to go ahead and divide both sides by a natural log of 2. So it's natural log of 21 divided by natural log 2 in the numerator, and the natural log of 2 in the denominator. And, and that's pretty disgusting. I think I don't really want to push that any further, but then to leave it there. OK, so there you go, folks. That is the sum of what we're going to get accomplished today. I hope this was a positive thing, and we'll see you soon.